All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday 10X interview. Every Tuesday, nine o'clock, I am interviewing someone amazing. Uh, you know, it just so happens this time it's someone that I've interviewed a lot, someone that I consider a good personal friend, Sean Herrera, the one and only. What's up, Adventure Lender? What is up, brother? Hey, everyone. I'm sorry that I have like a proper sweater on and no hat, but I have, I have to go to an actual meeting today. So I, I'm sorry for disappointing you all. Actually, I didn't someone give you a hard time for the hat backwards last time, or maybe that was Jeremy. Someone was like, hey, I'm getting tired of this <laughs> hat on backwards thing. Back, it's the backwards hat mo mortgage mafia. We're coming for you. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think I called it out, guys. Wear whatever you want. Like if you're if you're hitting your goals and whatever you're wearing gives you energy and makes you feel like your authentic self, keep doing it. Be you. Uh so so Sean, you know, we're we're gonna talk about starting over, but before we do that, let's let's talk a little bit about momentum builder, any takeaways you had from momentum builder. Uh, you know, this, this Sean and I were part like he had his own keynote, but we were like one part of one session and he did his his keynote was on starting over. Like what would he do if he started over? Um, but what what were your uh any takeaways from from momentum builder last week? Yeah, my top two. So um, I really like what Todd Duncan said at the opening of just, if you just focus on the, don't even worry about your leads, just take the pre-approvals you've already done and follow up on those, convert those more and you'll win. Like it's impossible not to. And that was just so obvious. It was like, that's just such an easy thing any of us can do. That was one. And then I took a lot of notes from Denise Donahue because I, what I realized from her presentation is her and I, use mortgage coach and other tools just so similarly in our client consultations, but there are some key phrases and words that she uses that I could add to like my psychology repertoire. So um, those were my, my, my key takeaways were those two. I love it. Yeah. So uh, I had a bunch of takeaways. I mean, I do want to just push on that suggestion to focus on your pre-approval funnel uh, and your, your hottest leads, like love, love, love that. Um, but you know, one takeaway is just how awesome the mortgage industry is. Uh, you know, we have such amazing people in the industry. The, the stage was amazing. And I just came away with feeling even more blessed around the, what we do for a living and, and, and what cool people we have and how important it is to get in person. Uh, now this was a big event to get in person right now. This is a virtual event to get in person. Sean Herrero has a tiny event. I think he caps it out at 10 people. We'll probably yeah. mention it a few times during the call, but you know, you can get in person, you know, Walt Schultz, like I, I see you in here. What about doing, you know, finding some mortgage coaches that you're all driving distance from each other and having a lunch together, a mastermind on what's, what's working. Uh, so I just want to push everyone uh, masterminding your local markets. If you're not masterminding with realtors, you should be. Um, for all you mortgage coaches, if you're not, you know, once a quarter meeting with the local mortgage coaches in your market, you should be uh, getting in person with awesome mortgage people is a blessing. It makes your life funner. It makes your job funner and it makes you better at what you do. Uh, what do you think about the tiny event, Sean? You think that's something people should come to? I think, well, only if you want to do big things without having a massive team. Yes. But it is something I've been thinking about a lot since we left momentum builder is the amount of questions I've gotten after us around mortgage coach. Another thing, it's like, I can't get in the weeds with you in an hour. I can't get into the weeds with you. Um, just over a quick email. I need you. If you want to get in the weeds, come to this event and you'll learn how to do it all, but we just can't do it in the short time frames. So yeah, it's, that's why it had to be in depth. And I just like, I could teach, I could teach somebody more in two days than I can in a year because we have 48 hours together. That's a really good point. And, and that, that's something else that was a big epiphany and something that I worked on over the weekend was we have these great events. We're in person, you know, the adrenaline's pumping. We're feeling good. We're like, yeah, that's a great idea. And I've been speaking at a lot of sales rally in Q1. You know, that was probably my, I don't know, sixth live event that I've spoken at. Most of them are individual sales rallies. And I started thinking to myself, you know what? First of all, everything that happens on stage is not equal in terms of it, it's actionable and it's 
It's enough information. There's meat on the bones. It's simple enough that there's specific things that you can do. And then I started thinking to myself, so not all sessions are equal. Some are more actionable than others. Sean delivered a very actionable, you know, 15 minute keynote. And I do believe like I've got a, a, a um, sales rally playbook that will hit LinkedIn in a couple of days. And one thing I'm advocating is don't do panels. Do like, if you have three people on a panel, you're going to get more actionable results. If you had three people do 15 minute Ted talks instead of a panel, like Sean gives a, a 15 minute Ted talk. I give a 15 minute Ted talk and then a little bit of Q and a, and then to really turn those ideas into skills and new sales habits, 30 day plan. So I'm going to be coming out with a, a playbook that's like, this is what you should do on stage. And here's the 30 day playbook. And if you're a producing branch manager, this is what you should do every week. So I just want to push folks. Um, what you do for the 30 days after a live event matters most. You know, I would be willing to bet that when you really look at transformation, there's 10 to 20% what happens on stage. There's 10% on 10 to 20% of, you know, who's your coach, who's your accountability partner. And then 50% is just doing and training and repeating over the course of 30 days. Any thoughts on that before we roll into starting over? Well, I think it, that's brilliant because you get all these ideas and, and the hard part is you fly home and you forget, right? You're all motivated and excited, whether it's a conference like we were just at or the sales rally by your company, you're pumped up and then you get home and it's over. And so you have to have like actionable things and then treat it like a workout. Like to Dave's point, I mean, if I started doing a hundred burpees every day and 10 pull-ups uh, five times a day, 30 days later, I would look different, right? But I would have to do it. And then that habit's built and it kind of carries forward. We just have to make sure whatever you're taking action on is moving you in the direction you want to move. Love it. And I, guys, I love the the chat in, in the Zoom community. If you're in Facebook, we like your comments there, but so far, Michael said, tiny event, hell yes, just do it. Thank you, Thank you for the support there, Michael. Uh, Robert Crosby said, I saw Sean present in a recent sales rally at Corona, in Corona, California, and he rocked. Uh, but by the way, that's another thing, guys. Sean Herrero wants to get out there and speak. He wants to create impact in the industry. Um, if you have a sales rally coming up, um, you know, this year he's spoken at two sales rallies that weren't cross country. Uh, so, you know, he's a, he's an incredible speaker and I highly recommend, we, we need to get him on more stages. So let your management know that Sean Herrero um, is game and other lenders are bringing him in because he is the adventure lender. Uh, one last thing, and then we're going to get into it. So when I introduced Sean um, at Momentum Builders last week, I started the introduction with, from a data perspective, Sean is a very special originator. Uh, Cross Country is a company he works with. They have over 40, 4,400 loan officers. When I say that out loud, I'm like, is it really 4,400? But yeah, they've, they're that big. And, and Sean is the 22nd highest producing loan officer out of over 4,400 loan officers across country. And the stat that's even more impressive, when they really break down things like um, underwriter touch points, uh, his, you know, lock to conversion, his app to conversion, uh, you know, the, all the things that really matter to a company to drive um, profitability and efficiency. He's the number six loan officer out of 4,400. So the guy is tiny, but he is mighty. And he's going to walk us through if he was going to start off um, in a new city, what he would do, like Sean starting over. So first of all, Sean, uh, what city would you start over? If you could pick one city in America that you want to start over in, what would it be? The only place I'm moving is Newport. That's that's where oh I would boy. move. And, and I think I think that's what, um, you know, we, we look where we live is where we work. And I'm hoping to change that a little bit for you guys today because things that come up to me uh, at one of the other conferences, I shared a cab with a guy and he had just, he'd moved companies like three or four times chasing jumbo product. Got to have jumbo. I got to have jumbo because of my market. I got to have jumbo. He moved to a new company and then they pulled out of jumbo, but he's locked into his, you know, whatever his signing bonus is. He's like locked in. He can't do anything. And I'm like, why do you guys keep chasing product? Like just 
shift markets. Like that's not hard to do. So I'll show you if I was moving to Newport, what I would do. And I like, I think this is a fun exercise because what I'm going to share and what I shared at Momentum Builder is literally what I'm doing in my own market now. I'm always looking for new people to work with. Um, so this is kind of a very actionable thing and you don't need a ton of tools. Like I think sometimes our apprehension is it's too expensive. I don't want to buy all these different things because every little subscription adds up. So if, if we only have mortgage coach and uh, Redfin and Google maps, you have enough to go build something big. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. We'll just start with the, with the cities first and Dave interrupt me as we go. Um, so basically here's Newport, right? Hey, I just real, searched real, real quick. Yeah. If, if I would just love to get a little pulse check for anyone that wants to share in comments, if you were to start over, what would be the city you'd want to start over in? So I'd love to just hear that from the audience. Let's all kind of get an idea and a vision that if I had a start over, this is where. Um, so share some ideas in, in chat. Las Vegas, let's go. That would be dangerous for me, mm -hmm. but roger that. Uh, Spokane, Washington, let's go. Spokane, uh, Tennessee or Florida, Queens Creek, Arizona. I think we need a little backstory on Queens Creek. You know, like yeah. what's what's up with Queens Creek? Uh, Scottsdale, baby. Yeah, let's go. El Dorado Hills, California. Let's go. Uh, all right. I'm going to quit calling them out. Huntington Beach or Fort yeah. Myers. I love that. All right. Go ahead, Sean. So, so Redfin, right? We all have access to this. So I just did a quick search of Newport Beach and it shows me my home prices, right? And so I see every home in Newport's a multi-million dollar property for the most part. Uh, so what do we say? Like our reason, if me being at Cross Country Mortgage, a, a mortgage banker, I'm probably not going to beat uh, high net worth people that have relationships at the big banks or with their, like a Morgan Stanley or, or a Merrill Lynch or something like that. So my excuse becomes, I can't win. I can't succeed because I don't have products that would support these people. The big banks undercut me on rates. That's what we all say. So it doesn't mean I can't live there, right? It just means I need to look wider. So then if I zoom out, it's like, okay, well, what else is around here? We all know that the further east we go, at least in California, you get away from the water, you get to lower price points. So it's like, okay, well, what happens if I go to like Irvine or Orange? Okay, I'm getting better, right? I'm, I'm in the lower price. I got a million three here, million four, um, some higher prices, but a better range for the people that I would serve. And when I say the people I serve, real estate agents, and then the type of people that move to these areas, um, I work with a lot of first responders. I work with a lot of military, um, a lot of trades. Um, it's just a different, a different demographic, right? And it's like, okay, so there's some potential for me hey, to kill hey, it. Real, real quick, I, you know, Sean, from stage, you said it so clearly that I love helping first time home buyers and I love helping military and first responders. And those are my people. So guys, you know, there's riches in niches and Sean is super clear. And I hope you're getting the takeaway as he's planning to move to another city. He, he has like who he likes to work with and who he vibes. And now he's figuring out like, Hey, what is the geographic area where I have this niche? So um, anyways, I love how you're thinking through this. Yeah. And again, so I, this, this is great, right? I'm sure these people are awesome, but they're probably going to have relationships that I can't be. And I don't want to switch companies. I don't want to go work at a big bank. It's not for me. So I work on looking at who I serve. And if you have a, an abundance mindset, that becomes easier. So first, first time home buyers are probably not buying $13 million homes in Newport, right? But maybe they are buying one ish million dollar homes in orange. And then if I go a little further East, like Corona, now I'm really into true conventional land, right? Like every deal here is going to be under, for the most part, most of these properties are going to have a loan amount under the conventional loan limit. And now rates are a commodity. 766,000 or less, we're all the same, are we, roughly speaking, right? But that level of, oh, I'm going to lose, if, if somebody in Newport called me, I'm going to have a fear of losing with a big dramatic rate difference, right? Because of the, the type of, uh, money that is there. But once I get out here, I, I, I confidently can beat anybody, 
right? I'll win. It's not win on rate, but I'm going to win on experience. Um, so then it's like, okay, cool. I, I know where my market's going to be. I'm going to focus on Orange and Corona, just using a couple cities for now. How far is that? Like, what's my commute? I'm going to be 38 minutes out. That's nothing. 38 minutes out doesn't mean I have to go there every day, but I can go out and make have meetings with realtors, do presentations in these areas, and really start to build a name for myself in these markets. Orange isn't even close to as far, right? That's all the way out to Corona, just 38 minutes. I'm going to drive 38 minutes after this today to go do a broker tour. So the, the methodology I'm showing you now, if I moved, is literally exactly the same as what I'm doing in my current market, because I'm looking at where do the people I love working with move to? Where are the realtors that I love working with? Um, those are the areas I would start to, to build in. And so the next question is, well, well, now what? So you found out where you're going. How are you going to find real estate agents to work with? Um, I feel like open houses have become critical again. If, because there's such a lack of inventory, you have to think about how many buyers are going to every single open house. They're all funneled into one. Right. So if, if I'm going to an open house or a, and a realtor is hosting an open house and they say, oh, we had a hundred groups through. Okay. Well, how many of them did you build a relationship with? Well, none. It was, they just were in and out. So then what was the point of sitting there all day? Like one of those hundred couples or people is going to buy that house. Maybe one of them, 99 are going to go buy something else. So it's a massive opportunity to get business for free as a real estate agent. And I believe it's my job to support them in getting that. So that's where kind of mortgage coach becomes my perfect open house tool. Um, so I'll show you what I would do here. So if I go to Newport or sorry, go to Corona. Hey, real, real, real quick. I want to, um, I want to um, get everybody to create kind of a playbook. Cause my goal with this is one for any new loan officers, you know, this is super valuable for obvious reasons, but I think what we're doing right now is super valuable for every mortgage professional because the thinking that you go through to start over can help you one expand into new markets. So, you know, like go 30 minutes further than you have before from the city you live and really execute. And I also believe that if we really do this right, like this can help you upgrade what you're doing. Like whatever you've been doing for the past year got you where you're at today. And most loan officers I know aren't satisfied with where they're at today. Like they want something more. So that means you need to do something different. You need to do something above what you're doing today. So I want everybody to create a little document, like, you know, just put a line and go starting over. And then, and then I want you to write down two or three goals, you know, like what would be my goals? I want to do this much volume. I want to, you know, win this many realtors and I don't want any more than three goals, but you know, Let's just have fun with me here. Humor me. Starting over, three goals. And then I want you to have three strategies and not five strategies. Like, I don't think it'd be easy. Like, and if you do have five, have them in order of priority. So that the fourth and fifth and, and, and strategy number one that Sean is covering right now is open houses. Like he's made a case for why that is a great starting over strategy. It's a great way to expand into new markets. That's strategy number one open houses. So keep going, Sean. I just want to help everybody create a playbook out of this because I have a feeling there's going to be another strategy that we talk about. And I want everybody to come away with your starting over playbook or your getting to the next level playbook. Well, and I'll tell you, really, you just brought something up that the, this whole process was a very real thing for me because last spring break, March of last year, I was in Newport Beach at Lido House Hotel uh, with my family, got two jumbo deals into contract. One of the realtors brought me a bottle of 1942 as a thank you because everything I, they, they would not have gotten their offer accepted had I not done what I did. They get accepted. We go down to Newport. And uh, as soon as we get there, get checked into the hotel. First client goes, hey, I just went to do my wire at Bank of America. And they say they could give me this rate. Can you match it? I'm like, no, why are we having this conversation now? Like I, you wouldn't have the house if it wasn't for me, but it was a 1% difference because he had so much money with them. So whatever, you know, if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose fast and I move on. Next, next guy calls, Hey, I just went to Wells Fargo. They said, if I move a million dollars over, they'll give me a half percent off my rate. Here we go again. So now this anxiety and fear comes in of Sean, you're going to lose. The sky is falling. It's 08 all over again. You have no value. And then we were at a steakhouse with my family and my friends 
And one of the realtors like, Sean, you need to fix this. You got to call this guy. Like I've called him, I've texted him. He's not getting back to me. And it kept going and I'm sitting at the dinner table doing this. And I finally walk out of the restaurant and I went, this is the first time in history I've ever walked out on my family and friends over a deal that I've already lost. Like this is worse than walking out when I have a deal that's going to make me money. Like this is a joke. And then that night I woke, couldn't sleep, woke up at three in the morning, tons of anxiety. And I was like, you know what? I don't want to feel like this ever again. So I went down to the lobby, grabbed my little notebook. And I started mapping this out and I said, what made you feel this way? Losing jumbo deals in the current environment. It doesn't mean it'll always be this way, but in the current environment uh, with very affluent people, I'm probably not going to be their guy. Um, so who, who do I love working with? And that's why I keep saying that military first responders, uh, first time home buyers. Those are my people. Where are these people moving where I live? Who are they working with? And I spent from three in the morning till probably seven in the morning mapping this out, just like Dave's describing. And guess what? I woke up that morning on spring break with my kids and it changed everything because I no longer had this fear. I was now confident and excited about spring break being over so I could go attack my plan. So that is the true story of how this kind of concept came together. Love it. Taking it to the next level. Had to. Like, I don't want to feel like that ever again. Um, so then mortgage coach. So what do you do? So like, let's say I've decided that I want, um, if I come into here for sale homes price point, like look at this little gauge, right? So I'm going to say, here's the majority of homes that sale in Corona 550. Love that. Oh, come on. So I don't want to like, that's a pretty sweet little zone right there. 550 to 900. Right. So then I go, okay, that's what I'm looking for. I want houses townhouses and condos. And I don't really care about bed bath. Well, Redfin now has kind of saved this search that I just made. And if you're logged into your account, I'm going to get a feed that tells me when new properties come to market. So when my email, I get an alert from Redfin saying, Hey, Sean, uh, one, one, what is this? Three, seven, eight glacier circle just came to market. Cool. Who's, who's the listing agent on this property? It's been on the market 17 days. Let's just say it was new. Um, Amy Williams, 017 license number. Newer agents are 0121 uh, around here. So, okay, she's a, a bit more of seasoned agent from a license number perspective. Her email address is right here. Sweet. So I'm going to build her a buyer's guide for her open houses. And I'm not going to ask her if she wants one. I'm just going to do it because I'm in a new market. You either have time or money. And in the current environment, I have plenty of time to do these things. So I would come in here to Mortgage Coach and I would build, where is it? Here it is. So here's your list price. And then what does it look like to go over, right? Because what I'm looking at, and we've talked about this a few times on these types of calls, but the way that people look at their offer price is I'm not, someone else is an idiot if they're going to pay that much for this house. Um, that's not the way they should look at it. They should be looking at what does the house cost them, not what does the house cost. So for this property, if this just came on the market at a million one twenty-five, I would build out 25 over list, 50,000 over list, 75,000 over list. I never say ask because we all know that the list price is not the ask price. They're two separate things. Well, if you go up 25,000 in price, your monthly payment goes up $180 a month. So buyer, is this house worth losing over $25,000 in price? Yes, it is. If someone else wants to pay that, let them go for it. That's the emotional reaction. Is it worth losing over $180 a month? No, not at all. It's the exact same question. I just asked, what does the house cost you? And is it worth it versus what does the house cost? And in this example, I think this was 10% down. Yeah, 10% down. Um, is it house worth losing over an extra $2,900 out of pocket? No, not at all. Okay, cool. So we've looked at this in the right way. This should be at every single open house. Because, and I print the first three pages. So you print your TCA, come up here, print, submit print. All the things that I highlighted in yellow are highlighted. Come on. So I've got price, payment, cash out of pocket. Those are the only things people visiting open houses really care about, right? So I have these three things. I'm going to print pages one through three because that's going to give me all the sexy graphics. So here's page one, page two shows the payment difference. I have my two year analysis and then I have my 10 year net worth analysis. Print that, 
PDF it to the agent, or if you're going to be there, print like 10 of these. Actually, I'm, I'm printing less because you don't want them to take them because you want them to need you. Um, and that's it. And this is a lot of data, right? They've never seen anything like this as an open house. Like, hey, realtor, what is this? I just created engagement with the real estate agent with someone that would never come up to them otherwise. What does a real estate agent typically do? Hey, thanks for coming by today. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, bye. That's it. Oh, would you mind signing in for the seller? No, I'm not signing in. I'm not giving you my information. Giving, getting someone's email or phone number is a transaction. I need to give something of value to get something of value. And so this creates value. What is this, realtor? Oh, well, you know, it's obviously really busy today. There's a lot of people. We're expecting to have multiple offers. So with my lender and I, it's really important to us that our clients look at their offer price in the right way. We want to make sure they look at what the house costs them instead of looking at what the house costs. And in this example, for $25,000 in price, your monthly payment increases by $180 a month. And that's how we want you to look at it. Is it worth losing the house over $180? Yes or no? Is it worth losing over $25,000? Emotionally, it's an easy yes. Oh, if you want this, what's your cell phone number? I can text you a copy of it right now. And, and then they just text them the, the URL, the, which I have as a hyperlink that they save in their phone notes. So I would build this and then I would send it to, what was her name? To Amy with a video recorded in my TCA. Hey, Amy, I'm Sean Hurro with Cross Country Mortgage. Um, I just saw your listing at 378 Glacier. And it's really important to me that people understand how they should really be looking at their offer price. This is what this does. Everything I just explained to you guys. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. This has been one of the best lead generation tools at an open house that I've used in the last 12 months. I gave something of value. I did an introduction. I didn't ask for anything in return. And I did something no one else is doing. And I kind of think it can be that simple. And what you did is more valuable to both people looking for a home and for agents than everything else. Yeah, guys, you know, give us a little a reaction. What do you what do you guys think of this first strategy? I think it's genius. I think any any loan officer that's closing less than three loans a month right now, guys, you know, the, the, there's there's no excuse. Here's a strategy that is going to get you leads. It's going to get you loans. It's going to get you realtors. And more important than all of that, it's going to give you confidence because you can you can be busy. You can be active. You can be out there doing it. And by the way, Sean's going to do a lot of loans this year. So he's He's already super busy. How many, um, what's your goal this year in terms of loans that you're going to close or volume? I mean, I, I, I did a over a hundred last year and I think if rates come down a little, I should be able to do 200 this year between refi and purchase. Um, but I'm really trying to keep my, my loan amount around five to 600,000 and just serve more of the families that I seem to serve best. I can't so, be all things so, to all people. So check that out guys. This is a hundred million dollar producer in this market. And he is going out there with a kick-ass um, uh, open house strategy. So anybody and everybody can do this. And like I said, if you're not killing it, this is, you know, it should be in everybody's top three strategies. So real, real quick, um, in chat, anybody that is doing open houses or is going to start with an open house strategy, let me know in comments. I just want to get a little pulse check of I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. Please, I'm doing them right now. Thumbs up. Uh, come on, guys. Let's let's give some quick feedback. It takes a second to give feedback in chat. And we have over 150 people on this call right now. So light it up, please. Um, okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate that feedback. So, so Sean, any I, I want to try to get three strategies for everyone. Yeah. You know, um, what's do you want to share anything else on open house or do you want to go to strategy number two? Yeah, let me show you one other open house strategy. Um, so, and by the way, uh, Dave called this call a one to many momentum builders, one to many uh, modern mortgage summit is an in-person one to many and a massive digital one to many. Um, I don't need to be at one house and every weekend. If I build this for 10 agents every weekend, I will be at 10 open houses without physically being there. That is a one to many as well. Um, so, so this one I have up right here, I literally hung up with this guy right before this call started list price was a million two. his agents. Like, I think it's going to go up to a million three. Um, and I had modeled out his buyer's guide at a million two, a million two fifty, and then a million three. Cause she said that and he called, he's like, Sean, a million three, just, I can't do a hundred thousand over. It's just not my number. I think a million two fifty is my max. 
I said, okay, I understand. And I asked him the same question I just explained to you. And I said, is the house worth losing? It, it was like a $560 difference. I was like, if you lose and the monthly payment would have been $560 more, would you be bummed out that you, you missed out on? He's like, well, yeah, I would absolutely. I'm like, it's the same question, right? The, it's a, not a hundred thousand over it's 560 more per month. And then he said, well, what, then what does a million three fifty look like right now? We're going above and beyond his stretch goal. And I, we did a million three fifty, but he wants to keep his cash to close at five ninety or less. And he wants his monthly payment under 6,500. So he said, based on these two goals, you just told me you wanted, you really should set your upper limit at a million three twenty five, not a million three fifty. If either one of these can flex, then we can go higher. That was a 10 minute phone call where his max was a million two fifty. And now he's asking me about a million three fifty because I took the time to educate him on how the numbers work instead of trying to sell him something, right? That's the power of doing a screen share and using this. And um, that would just happen. So I had to touch on that one. Now let's say you're you're looking at Redfin and you find an older listing. And now it's like we're about to do a price reduction. <clears throat> so this is one I had a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I went online, saw so I'd been on the market 29 days. I called the agent and I said, hey, are you about to do a price reduction? We're kind of in that range. And she goes, we just dropped it by 100,000. Cool. So the list price that I saw of 1,499, it used to be 1,599. So now it's like in support of the agent and in support of the homeowner, the buyer's already getting 100 grand out of it, right? I want to show, I don't want this number to go down further. So in support of the listing agent who think of the pressure that she has on her from her seller at this point, right? I want to show how paying higher will save more money. So you could pay a million four ninety nine and uh, have a monthly payment of ninety five hundred and three ten out of pocket, or you could pay a million five oh nine, ask for a ten thousand dollar closing cost credit, and save eight thousand dollars in pocket immediately. Or if you want to have a lower rate because the payment is what's hurting you, you could do a temporary interest rate reduction buy down, get your rate down to five point seven five. So I just did a one year because I only wanted to use ten thousand. I didn't want to use up a bunch of money. I'm going to keep your cash to close the same but you're gonna get uh, your interest rate down to by 1% and your payment will be better. So if you really love this house, is the payment the part that you're struggling with? Is it the cash out of pocket? Pay a little bit more for the house and you can solve either one of those. She loved this and that's this video speaks to the homeowner. So my goal is agent presents, uh, client comes up to them or ho open house visitor comes up to them and says, hey, what's, what is this, this thing with all these yellow lines on it? Oh, it's a buyer's guide. We want to show people different strategies. Um, if you want this on your phone, my lender recorded a video. He can explain it way better than I can. Uh, what's your What's your phone number? And I'll text you the link. What an easy way to ask for someone's contact information. And then when they click on this, it won't. The audio won't play very well, I don't think. But when they click on this, it explains what I just explained to you guys. And we all have the ability to do this and record these videos. And I think a TCA without a video is, is you, you did 50%. You're getting an F on that one. The video makes it an A. Love, love, love this. And, and here's another takeaway for everyone on this. To do what Sean's doing and to have the success that he's doing, he's a mortgage coach. I mean, he is a data-driven mortgage advisor. So for anyone on the call that doesn't you know know how to show strategies like this and doesn't know how to create a mortgage coach. Obviously, you know, there's a to do. You have strategies. You need to become a master mortgage coach. Uh, we train on this every Wednesday at, at um, wait, Wednesdays. Yeah. Wednesdays, 11 o'clock Tuesdays at nine o'clock. Um, if you go to the trustengine.com forward slash 10 X page and scroll down, you can sign up for the live training. Um, but you need to be able to deliver advice. You need to be able to help share these strategies that help sell homes and help help realtors. So anyways, you're killing it, bro. Anything cool. else on Hope and Houses before we go to strategy number two in the starting over guide? No, no, we can. That's because those are how we look at open houses. It's either the house is going to sell super fast and we're going to be over, over list or it's going to sit on the market and we're going to look at price reductions. And so I want to show solutions in either direction. And it's, and again, I, I hate cold calling. Um, I'm, I have a huge fear of it, but when I'm building this out and the house has been on the market for 30 days, Hey agent, um, I saw you on the market. You're about to do, I'm building out your buyer's guide site for your open houses. Um, do you want me to show some different strategies that makes it easy for me to make a cold call? 
because I have, I'm not calling to ask for business. I'm not being selfish. I'm calling to provide value. And that just, is, it's like a paradigm shift if you start thinking of it that way. Yeah. And by the way, a couple of quick questions before we move on mm -hmm. and let's nail them quick so we could get to other strategies. But um, Corey wanted to know, what do you say in the email when you haven't worked with the agent before? And just share, give us a quick scripting of what that email sounds like to a new agent. So not much. Um, I don't want to overexplain. explain. Um, if we give them everything, they don't have to ask us for anything. So the email will say, hey, here's your open house kit for 378 Glacier Circle. That's my listing. So now I'm paying attention. Click, hey, uh, I think it was Amy. Hey, Amy, uh, I'm Sean Herrera, mortgage lender. I saw your open house, love the house. Uh, I built a buyer's guide that helps people look at price in the right way. I, I know this is going to go over lists and I want you to get as many offers as possible. Something like that. Click here to see the buyer's guide for 378 Glacier Circle. It's a, it's a link. I don't say TCA. We all know what a TCA is, but they don't. So you have to put it in human terms. Here, click here for the buyer's guide. And then when they click on that, the video auto plays, right? The video in the mortgage coach auto plays. And so it's, hey, Amy, I'm Sean Herrero. Thanks for taking a look at this. You know, blah, 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 blah. Everything I already told you guys. I get an email that says, uh, the mortgage coach TCA for 378 Glacier Circle was just viewed. It was only sent to one person. So I know she she, she opened it, right? So I'm getting feedback at the same time. Um, that's what I would do with these if I'm sending them cold. And some people go, well, I don't want to waste time building these out. It takes 20 minutes. You have nothing but time if you don't have business, right? I mean, what, what, what monthly expense have I spent on me moving to Newport Beach Mortgage coach. I have not paid a dime for any other resource, right? And it's the most valuable resource I have. So I'm going to use it to the full extent that I can. But this is a very, very low cost approach. You either have time or money. And I think a lot of us, have, unfortunately, have a ton of time right now. I love this, man. So good. Um, another question was, when are you doing the TCAs for the open house are under the assumption that the property will appraise at a very different price point, or are you basing your numbers off the list price and bringing in the difference in an appraisal gap? So, um, 30,000 feet doesn't, none of, I don't worry about any of those things. One, I never have problems with appraisals ever. Um, and I'm, I'm showing incremental gaps, right? Million dollars, a million 25, a million 50, a million 75. The concept is I don't care what their offer price is going to be. I just want them to understand that what they should really be considering is their monthly payment change in their cash out of pocket, not the actual price of the home. The what if it doesn't appraise? What if this? What if that? Let that come later, right? That's when they need you. Hey, well, I mean, what a great problem to have. Real estate agent is kind of devil's advocate. Yeah, well, what if it doesn't appraise? Oh, well, I never have that problem. 2020, 2021, never had it because we only use the best local appraisers. Oh, and who are you again? Why do you have a 925 phone number when you're, when you're in 949? Oh, because I just moved to Newport and I want to help you build more. But it becomes so easy. And it it's it, I want them to ask those questions because I then get to confidently say, if you're having these problems, you're clearly working with the wrong lender. I love it. You know, I did an interview um, yesterday. It's going to be on our, our um, channel pretty soon. And it was called, is, is now a good time to buy? You know, and uh, I interviewed a top producer on the East Coast uh, about a half hour out of the DC market. And and he is just leveraging the heck out of, you know, that headline is is now a good time to buy. And then doing a cost of waiting, you know, TCA and leveraging that in the process. So there, guys, there's so many things, but you, again, you, you gotta be a mortgage coach. You need to know how to deliver these strategies. Uh, hopefully most, you know, we've got about 150 people live on this call. My guess is this will get watched by over a thousand mortgage professionals. Um, for any branch managers watching this, you know, I've got a playbook coming out on LinkedIn this week that that will show you how to go from this virtual event and make action over the next 30 days. So make sure you keep an eye out for that, guys. So Sean, we got 20 minutes left. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the next strategy? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go first time home buyers. Um, yes, I wrote down first time home buyers. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what my number three was, but uh, I'm glad that that's where you went because I was gonna share that strategy if you didn't. Yeah, well, and I don't have a number. I don't have a third one, so we'll we'll jump to oh, that cool. next. 
but again, you don't, you don't need, you guys don't need a ton of, of things, right? Just get really good at a couple of things and do them over and over and over again. So for me, um, this is a strategy I, uh, that I took, uh, I saw a listing, I saw a listing on Instagram and it was a, a for rent listing from an agent team that does a ton of business in the markets that I like to serve. And I looked at it and I was like, huh, I wonder if it still makes sense to rent versus own. That, that is what my mind went to. I was looking at the numbers and go, I wonder if it would, this would play. Um, I have to go with that. Like when you have thoughts like that, you have to work from those. So I just built it out. So I said, okay, it's going to rent for three, 3,200 bucks a month. They have $50 a month in rent. So they bought this, an equivalent home. So I went to Redfin, looked up a three bed, two bath, this many square feet. What would that cost in the same area? Um, $500,000 home. I did 5% down. Uh, that gives me a $475,000 loan amount. Um, clearly this is from last, last, uh, December. Um, the monthly payment, mortgage taxes, insurance, all things considered, including an HOA payment, because it was going to be a townhouse is 39.83, right? So on the surface, we lose does not, you can't rent. It's, it's more expensive to buy than to rent. But if I build in their tax benefit, and this doesn't apply in every state, but in California, you're paying a minimum of 10% in tax, and you still get your mortgage interest and property tax deduction. So I built in a 10% California state tax. Uh, that gives me 250 bucks more in my paycheck every month. And I'm paying down $440 per month into the equity of my home. So when I net those two things out, I'm at 3300 right? Is it worth renting for 3250 or would you rather own for 32 for 3300 that's pretty close right there's a 50 dollar difference well what does it do for you and when i do rent versus zones i always do a three-year analysis so when you click more info this is the most powerful thing for first-time buyers and real estate agents when you're showing them the benefit of owning versus renting in three years you will have spent 122 thousand dollars in rent no Buddy renting looks at it that way. All they look at is what do I pay per month? Because we live our life month by month, right? When you show them that in three years, they spent 122,000, human nature is not to look forward. What do we always say? Hindsight's 2020. Boy, I sure wish I would have bought sooner. I can't believe I've paid $122,000 in rent. And what if you had bought? Your total payments would have been 143,000, but 17,000 of that is you giving equity into your home, a forced savings account. And you have about $9,000 that went into your pocket instead of to uh, the great state of California. So your net cost of owning is actually 5,000 less over three years. And by the way, if the property appreciates at 5% annually, and there is a million articles that will say that that's happening nationally, your home value will have gone up to by 95,000. Your loan balance will be down to 457. In just three years, you will have equity in your home of 137,000 just from taking... 36,000 out of pocket. Again, hindsight isn't, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. It's not, I'm so excited to buy this home. It's why didn't I do this sooner? And that's the emotion that we want to create, not for ourselves, not for the real estate agent, but if we truly think everyone is better off being a homeowner, I want to create this, why didn't I do this sooner emotion? So they get excited about home ownership. And that is, this is the most powerful thing. It just, it's, it's so clear. So that's what I do on rent versus own. And, and then I posted that. I took that listing. I took a screenshot of it. I made a little Instagram video with the green screen. And I said, I just saw this listing come up, come up and I blocked the address and I blocked the realtors so I don't get in trouble. And, and I said, I just saw this, but I was curious what it looked like to buy a similar house. And then I took a screenshot from my phone of mortgage coach. And I said, here's the breakdown, everything we just went through. And I posted it on Instagram. And that realtor, of course, saw it and shared it. Um, and other realtors saw it and shared it too, because what am I doing? I'm helping them overcome the objections they hear of home ownership. It's too expensive. I'm just going to rent, you know, and boy, what a great opportunity. Hey, I have a client who is considering they're moving into the area. They're, they're not sure if they want to rent or if they want to buy. They're leaning towards renting. Put them in touch with me. Let me build them a rent versus own. And then we'll go from there. That person will become a client at some point because I gave them advice so that they can make a confident decision. If they choose to rent for the next 24 months while they get situated in a new city, do your thing, right? But maybe they buy sooner, but I'm giving myself as much opportunity to give as much value to people as I possibly can with using one tool. That is so, so, so powerful. So simple, so powerful. Uh, and, and going forward, 
in the mortgage industry, uh, all mortgage professionals need to become masters at vision casting beyond the transaction. You know, let, let's face it, lots of loan officers can show transactional details. Not a lot of mortgage professionals can show what is this going to look like in three years? What is this going to look like in five years? What is this going to look like in a time that matters to that consumer? Um, and usually it's three to five years. And, you know, sounds like Sean has gravitated to his default is three years, but, you know, make sure that you're tailoring it. And, and not only will what Sean just showed you help you with, with um, first time buyers, turning renters into homeowners, making confident buyers who make confident offers. I wrote that down from your presentation. Um, but this is what's going to help you with move up buyers too. Like, People have a 2%, a 3%, or even a 4% rate on their mortgage, they're not going to move up because of the interest rate. Like that's holding them back. But when you can say, hey, you know, look at what this move up home is going to look like in three years, in five years, in seven years, whatever the time that matters to that move up buyer, now you're you're helping them vision cast beyond their mortgage and their rate. And they can make a decision, you know, do I sell that home and move up? Do I rent out that home and, and still move up? But you've got a vision cast and show it in three years, five years going forward in mortgage. And, and I love that. Um, Sean, how, how are you, um, you know, leveraging the fact that you are a um, first home IQ ambassador and, and given the fact, I, I assume that because you have such a focus on winning with first time home buyers, that was part of what gravitated to becoming a first home IQ ambassador. But if you could just speak to why are you a first time home um, or first home IQ ambassador and how are you leveraging that or how do you plan to leverage that going forward? Yeah. So, I mean, I've all clearly, I already have a passion for helping. That's truly like 99% of my clients are first time buyers. I'm 42. I would say everyone at this point is younger than me. Um, and that I think the way I work is, is that's why I attract who I attract. Right. Um, I didn't set out and say, sorry, I only work with first time buyers. It just, the process has created that. Um, first of all, my cue gives me the ability to have a community of people that are focused on the same thing. Uh, and, and, and accountability in a way, I, I mean, there's a lot of things that I think everybody already knows. And I have a 21 year old son and I assume he, he, knows less than he should, right? That's my fault as a, as a dad. I want to be able to empower the next generation and even the current generation. There's there's too much to fight. You know, there's articles. Dave has put out so much information about all these, uh, like there's a podcast he showed that they're just discouraging home, home ownership. It's okay to rent. We're trying to give people permission to not do this. And, and it's, I don't know, I don't know why. And first home IQ, I mean, the amount of research that Kristen Messerly has done that she tees up for us, I can now leverage that to create solutions. Like I did one about the top five things you need to know about credit. Um, I just did a green screen video on Instagram using the resources that first home IQ provided. And I, I need, I need to do a lot more of that. Um, but that's, that's the goal. It's a community of people that are focused on the same thing that have their heart in the right place. And then uh, a ton of research to show what needs to happen and then just the resources to do it. Well, I know one of Sean's goals is to have a thousand people take his, you know, first time uh, or first home IQ ambassador test. So if you go to firsthomeiq.com forward slash Sean hyphen Herrero, you'll get this. We'll put a link in chat. I actually just put a link in chat. Uh, if you have not taken this quiz, make sure you take this quiz. Uh, again, part of the benefits of being a first home IQ ambassador is you get a private link. So you're you're building a database, like you're you're sharing that on social media and and you're building a database. If you want to learn no, more about first home IQ, one, go to the website, uh, click on the loan officer and realtor page, and you can one sign up to be an ambassador, you can donate. Um, or you can email uh, Kristen Messerly at Kristen with an I um, at First Home IQ. But anyways, uh, anything else you want to add to your first time home buyer strategy or how you're leveraging First Home IQ or Trust Engine? And then I've I've got a third strategy for everyone, but anything else you want to add? 
I just want us to really think, put ourselves in their shoes, put yourself in the real estate agent shoes, put yourself mentally in sitting in an open house, put yourself in a first time home buyer shoes when they're being told never to buy a house, then it's okay to rent forever. Um, and then solve problems. If you don't think that feels right, then, then solve for it. But if you put yourself in their shoes, the rest becomes really easy. I love it. So, so guys, the, the last third strategy I'm going to put it from a starting over perspective is your database and, and, and making sure going forward in the mortgage space, you're, you're optimizing your database. You're not just leveraging it, you're optimizing it. And, and if you're new in the business, you have a database, you have people that you would have invited to your wedding and you could call all the renters and say, Hey, I need your help. I need to practice doing a rep versus own analysis. Uh, and, and so I can really help other people that are renting make an informed decision, whether, whether, and when they should get into homeownership and then practice, uh, call your homeowner friends and go, Hey, I need your help. I need to practice. I need to, you know, do a move up analysis and learn how to do that at a level that's mastery for all these people. So everyone's got a database, leverage and master your database. Uh, you know, I wanna I wanna share something from Trust Engine on how to optimize a database real quick. I'm gonna share my screen. Sean, if you're not seeing it, uh, you know, I see it. let me know. But but everybody needs to go from speed to lead being the number one thing to get conversion to speed to need. Like you you need to be able to predict the needs of consumers. And 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 you notice Sean, he's anticipating what the objections are and he's coming up with strategies to do that. That's like a speed to need strategy. Uh, when it comes to your database, hopefully everybody has a database that's getting monitored at some level. Uh, you know, even if you're only getting what we call trigger alerts, you know, you're you're getting you know, someone runs a credit report with another lender. Sales Boomerang does this. Now, the ch the challenge and the the missed opportunity here is is that they're they're not predictive. These are people that are already in the market, and it's it's literally about forty percent. Like if you're just getting this, it's actually less than thirty percent of all the opportunities that are really happening in your database. And you need to get more predictive. You need to know like, hey. There's a first time home buyer in this household. This looks like a family that's getting ready to move up or move down. Uh, it's one of the things we do here at Trust Engine. I'm not gonna get into detail on it right now, uh, but but if you have a leadership team that wants to help you optimize your database, you know, at Trust Engine, that is an enterprise only offering. So uh, we can't do optimization of databases for individual LOs, but you know, put me in touch with your leadership team and we'll show them how to do that. But everybody on this call, you can you can have your data in an actionable place. You can call on annual reviews. Sean, um, last time I interviewed you, you you had something that like you don't do annual reviews. You do what kind of reviews? We do quarter, quarterly mortgage reviews. So every, every three months. So if somebody bought a house today, three months from today, they would get an updated buyer's guide. Call it a mortgage review at that point. Um, here's your current mortgage. Here's where AKA current mortgage coach, coach. AKA yep. mortgage yeah. coach. Not a TCA and not, Hey, here's your TCA. They don't know what that is. Here's your buyer's guide. Now it's a mortgage review. Here's your current mortgage. Here's what interest rates right now look like better or worse. Doesn't matter. Video that explained, Hey, rates are currently higher than what you have. You're in a great spot. I'm so glad you bought when you did. Hey, it looks like you could save 200 bucks a month. Is that worth it to you? Let's jump on a call and look at it. We do that every three months. So, so guys, like everyone in the mortgage business should be doing this right now. You know, you if your volume is down, like why are you not going to open houses? Why can you not do first time home buyers? You know, why are you still giving a fee worksheet? Actually, I'm going to pull up my slides from uh, Momentum Builder. Uh, Sean and I, Kristen and I gave a presentation before Sean went on stage and, uh, let me pull this up real quick because because here's the deal like if if you're quoting rates oh no is that not it hang on so sean give me a minute to pull up this slide yeah. but we've got five minutes left some closing thoughts you have on today's call and then i'll show what i was going to show yeah, so I'll just give you guys kind of where mindsets, my mindset has been is uh, Seth Godin has a book called This is Marketing. And in that book, he said, 
no one needs a quarter inch drill bent, but the, but they need a quarter inch hole. And I just paused when I read that. And I was like, what does that mean? And I put myself in my own shoes. Like I went to get the um, drill bit because I needed it for a reason. I didn't want a drill bit to show my friends, but I wanted it for some other reason. And then he goes on to say like why it is and everything gets down to emotion, right? And it made me think about what we provide. We provide something that quite literally everyone wants to get rid of. When Dave created Mortgage Coach, he created Freedom Point to show how you could get rid of the thing that we provide faster. If we know that, why do people want a mortgage? They want to buy a house. Why do they want to buy a house? But because of maybe they're the first one to ever do it. You, you got to go into the depth and get to the emotion of people. And when you become tied into their emotion, then again, this all gets easier, right? Because you're, you're becoming an advisor. You're becoming somebody of service. You're no longer a salesperson. We just assume, oh, they want to buy a house. They need a mortgage. Let's just give them what they ask for and be order takers. No, we got to go deeper than that. So those, those are my closing thoughts. All right. Here's my closing thoughts. I'm going to share my screen to deliver it. But, but guys, you know, this is a slide from um, the first home IQ um, ambassador deck. This, this, the wealth gap in America is basically, you know, those who own versus those that rent and the wealth gap is getting wider. And, and when you look at the data and the demographics, it's only going to continue to widen indefinitely. So when I started the business in 1986, this is how I quoted rates at the point of sale. It was a yellow sheet of paper. You know, in 1989, the LOS came out and this was innovative. This was amazing because it's 2024. And this is how most loan officers still quote rates. You know, you, most of you on this call, I would be willing to bet that you're not delivering this, a mortgage coach experience to every single consumer you'd serve. You're, you're delivering this. And it's pretty much the same thing as 18, 1989. So it truly is time to go from, I'm a fee worksheet loan officer to I'm a data driven mortgage coach. I'm, I'm helping first time home buyers make, you know, confident decisions. So they make confident offers. This particular one is five years, but whether it's three years, five years, uh, you know, make sure that you guys are, are upgrading your advice skills. So Sean, um, we got one minute left. Any other Thoughts. I know you already gave your closing thoughts, but I'm going to give you one more chance. And also, yeah. everyone, while Sean's giving that, give us a little reaction. Let us know what you thought of today's call with Mr. Sean Herrero. And while you're getting a bunch of hearts, give us a last thought. I'm tapped out. <laughs> all right. All, well, I, I got, I got, got one. Give. I got one for you. I thought you were going to go here. Guys, sign up for the tiny event. Like, like he, Sean is super passionate about this event that he is putting on. It's, it's in Newport Beach. It's, you know, in what's called Lido Village. The hotel is amazing. It's a very inspirational place. Uh, let's face it, the, you know, if 10 people are in a room and it's not an inexpensive event, it's not an inexpensive hotel. It's a real investment, but you'd be around like-minded people um, learning how to, you know, have a tiny team, but create mighty results. So anyway, Sean, I had to pull that Thank one out you. for you. No, thank you. I, I have my, so we opened the event with the Navy SEAL. This is his military only resume. The guy that's coming to the next one, he sent me his resume, obviously very soft-spoken. And I, I'm just like, this is insane. So our speaker is going to be epic. That's there on March 22nd. Um, but again, it, the event is for people who are not happy where they are and want to do more with less. If you have that like conviction, this is a great event for you. All right. Now it's time for my closing thought. So, so guys, it is that time again, Modern Mortgage Summit is game on, uh, you know, tickets went on sale last week, you can go to modernmortgagesummit.com, uh, you know, Sean will be speaking at it, Daniel Saw, a lot of people from previous years, uh, Katie Pastor is new to the stage, men, um, one of the top social media influencer mortgage professionals, Shivani again, we're going to have a number of top realtors, uh, I think, I think we could only sell 65 tickets and I think there's like 45 left. I mean, we just started selling it. So if you want to be there in person, it's a thousand dollars, get your ticket. I do believe we'll sell out. And then of course, virtual tickets are available. We have a lot of mortgage professionals that are going to do watch parties. And if you want to get the live ticket and have a third, uh, a one year pass sign here, but it is time to sign up for the modern mortgage summit. 
Hope everyone got value. Sean, you killed it as always, brother. And uh, this is a wrap, everyone. Take care. Thank you, guys. Take care.